There, we're going to talk about two definitions of acids and bases. The first is the Arrhenius definition. He was a Swedish scientist. Um, his definition is that an acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. So the example here is HCl. HCl is a covalent compound. It's not an ionic compound. It's two nonmetals. But when we dissolve HCl, when we put it into water, it ionizes and forms hydrogen ion and chloride ion, and so it meets the definition of a Arrhenius acid. <coughs> what is a hydrogen ion? How many electrons does a hydrogen atom have? One. One electron. It's a bad E. And how many protons? One. Okay, so if you take that hydrogen atom and you make it into a hydrogen ion, a plus one charge, that means you lost the electron. What's left? A proton. Hydrogen ions are highly reactive. So here you have a proton, just this tiniest nucleus possible. It's reasonable to think that that's going to be reactive. I like to think of hydrogen ions as being babies, okay? So like a three-month-old baby. Do you see many three-month-old babies walking around on the sidewalk? No. You don't even see any just laying in the grass. Where do you see three-month-old babies? Somebody's holding them, right? They're being held because they're too tiny to be out by themselves. So that's how I think of hydrogen ions. They're too small to be out by themselves. They're always with somebody else. So what hydrogen ion does is it rides piggyback on a water molecule. So this hydrogen ion will come over here and share one of these lone pairs with oxygen. This is like you have two people at dinner and one person orders a meal and the other person doesn't. and says, hey, will you share with me? And we're like, yeah, you should have ordered your own, but I'll share. So oxygen has those two lone pairs, one here and one here, and it can, it can share this lone pair with the hydrogen ion. And so we get a covalent bond here, and this is called a hydronium ion. It's got a special name, and you should know that name. It's H3O+. So whenever there are hydrogen ions in water, they are always associated with a water molecule and form that hydronium ion. You do not find them alone, ever. Okay? Now, writing H3O+, all the time, gets a little tedious, and so make a note of this. Chemists often use H plus and H3O plus interchangeably. But we understand that when we talk about H plus, it's H plus that's riding on a water molecule. It's actually hydronium. And so we call it H plus just to make things a little simpler. But we're not saying it's a different thing. When we write the molecular formula for an acid, we generally write the ionizable hydrogen first. This is, uh, down here, this is formic acid. This is the, the structure of formic acid. There's a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to this oxygen, also bonded to a hydrogen, and this oxygen has a hydrogen on it. This is the ionizable hydrogen. When we write the formula for this, we put that hydrogen first, and any other hydrogens are later. That's why when we write acetic acid, we write H, C2H3O2. We don't write C2H, well, I said three and wrote two, C2H3O2. We don't write it this way. Why? Well, just out of convention. So, you know, if you said, if you wrote that, I would understand what you mean, but that's like baby talk. So, this is the more sophisticated, more acceptable way. We put that hydrogen first. And that also then falls into that pattern that we learned when we talked about nomenclature of how do you recognize the formula of an acid. It starts with hydrogen. Okay, so any formula that starts with hydrogen is an acid. Arrhenius also had a definition of what a base is. And a base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. So sodium hydroxide is an example. 
Sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound, and when you put it into water, it dissociates or ionizes into its two ions, sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So any soluble ionic compound that has a hydroxide ion in it will then be a base. Not everything that has OH in its formula is a base. So here's the formula for methanol, CH3OH. And you might look at that and say, oh, there's an OH, that must be a base. But is this an ionic compound? No, there's no metal in it. You're like, well, that doesn't fit any of the patterns we learned in nomenclature. No, it doesn't. It's an organic compound. It has another set of nomenclature rules. But we should be able to recognize that that is not an ionic compound. It doesn't have an H4 plus or a metal ion, so it's not ionic. So molecular compounds do not act as bases under the Arrhenius definition. So the acid forms hydrogen ions, the base forms hydroxide ions. What happens when hydroxide ions, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions get together? They form water. So this is the net ionic reaction from a neutralization reaction where you have an acid plus a base. The net ionic reaction is that the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion that are formed will combine together to form water, and we've seen that before. Now, the Arrhenius definition is great as far as it goes, but it doesn't uh, explain why there are substances that act as a base even though they don't have OH minus hydroxide ion in them. And the Arrhenius definition does not apply to any non-aqueous solvents. So, like, if you were using um, ethanol or... I don't know, diethyl ether or, or something other than water as your solvent, the Arrhenius definition doesn't work. So then there's another definition, and this was, this was by two guys, Bronsted and Lowry. So the Bronsted-Lowry definition is similar in a way, but it, it has a significant difference. So Bronsted-Lowry said that an acid is a proton donor. Well, what's, what's a hydrogen ion? Hydrogen ion is a proton, right? So hydrogen ion and proton, we can use those two terms interchangeably. So an acid is a proton donor or a hydrogen ion donor. A base is a proton acceptor. This definition applies to a much wider range of acid-base reactions, and it focuses on the transfer of that hydrogen ion or the proton, which they're the same thing. So HCl um, is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, but not, we don't say because it produces hydrogen ions, but because it transfers, it donates a proton to water. So here we have HCl. <coughs> this hydrogen ion leaves the HCl and gets transferred to the water, forming the hydronium ion. And then what's left is the chloride ion. So this is, um, reflects more clearly what's actually happening because we don't actually have hydrogen ions in solution. There has to be something that's taking them, and it's the water molecules when you put HCl in water. So the acid is the HCl, and the water is acting as a base because it's accepting it. So... You know, you can imagine a young couple with their baby and they go to Disneyland because you're supposed to take your baby to Disneyland, right? So here's a clue. Babies don't remember going to Disneyland. Don't, don't kid yourself that you're doing it for the child. If you want to go, by all means go. But don't say, oh, well, you have to take him to Disneyland. No, you don't. My four-year-old has never been to Disneyland and he seems to be turning out just fine. We'll take him eventually. But so, the couple goes to Disneyland. So, CL- is the mom, and she's holding the baby, and she wants to ride Space Mountain. Is she going to take the three-month-old baby on Space Mountain? No. She's going to hand the baby to her husband and say, Here, honey, hold the baby. I'm going to go ride on this ride. And so now he's got the baby. Okay? So, the proton is just getting passed back and forth is what's going on. 
um, ammonia is a base that doesn't fit the Arrhenius definition. There's no hydroxide, there's no oxygen in ammonia, NH3. How can it be a base? How can it produce hydroxide ions in solution? Well, what happens is NH3 is a proton acceptor. It follows the bronsted lowry definition. And so NH3 will say, hey, I'll hold your baby for you, because H2O has two hydrogens. And it may want to pass one off to the ammonia so it can go ride Space Mountain. I don't know why I picked Space Mountain, but it's one of my favorites. Um, so then NH3 becomes NH4. So NH3 has accepted the hydrogen ions. It's acting as a base. Think base, babysitter. What does the babysitter do? It takes care of your baby, right? So the, the babysitter accepts the baby. And the parent, you know, donates. You're going to get it back, though. But the, the parent passes the baby off to the babysitter. So here's the babysitter, and this is donating, so this is the acid. Any questions so far? So if there's an acid that's donating a proton, there has to be a base to accept it, because you can't just set the baby on the shelf or on the sidewalk and walk away. You just can't, okay? So if there's going to be a proton being donated, there has to be an acceptor for it. So every time there's an acid, there's a base. So with the HCl in water, the HCl was acting as the acid. The water was acting as the base. When we put ammonia in water, ammonia will accept the proton, and H2O, water, will donate it. So ammonia is the base, and now H2O is acting as an acid. Isn't that kind of weird? The water can act as an acid or as a base. And we have a special word for that, amphoteric. Where do amphibians live? They can live in the water or on the land, because you can't be in both places at one time. I've tried. It doesn't work. Amphoteric. So it can be either. An amphoteric substance can be either an acid or a base, and water is an example of that. <laughs> Random glassware falling. Because the last lab didn't clean up after themselves. So what happens when we take that reaction and reverse it? Let's, let's go back here a minute. You see this um, ammonia and water reaction? This is a double-headed arrow here. That's an equilibrium, isn't it? The reaction is going both ways. So let's write it backwards. So here's the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion, and they can react to form ammonia and water. NH4 is going to be the proton donor, and OH- is going to be the acceptor. So this is just passing the baby back and forth. Ammonia had the baby, I'm sorry, water had the baby to start with, passed it off to ammonia, and now the ride is over and ammonia is giving the baby back. That's all that's going on, back and forth, back and forth. So ammonium ion and ammonia, the molecule, are related, aren't they? The difference is that here ammonia is holding someone's baby and here it isn't. These are called a conjugate acid-base pair. Conjugate acid-base pair is two substances that are related to each other by the transfer of a proton. So when you look at their formulas, the only difference is that one has a, is a one higher charge and one more hydrogen ion, one more hydrogen. It's the only difference. I could swear there was a picture there before. Huh. So a conjugate acid-base pair is any two substances related to each other by the transfer of a proton. Or perhaps I was supposed to delete that slide. I don't know. I think I was supposed to delete that slide. That's what happened. So it happens when you edit slides late at night. You forget things. So picture. Pictures are great. So here's the ammonia and the ammonium. What's the difference between them? Well, this has another white lump on top. That's the hydrogen. 
and it was the hydrogen ion didn't bring an electron, so that causes the char charge to change because it's a proton. So when you add a proton, you add plus one charge to whatever charge the thing had before. Water and OH minus hydroxide are also a conjugate acid base pair because they differ just by a hydrogen ion. So here if we take one of these off and then we're taking away a plus charge, we end up with OH minus. If we are if we put an H plus on this, then we get water. You see that? So in any acid base reaction like this, there's going to be two conjugate acid base pairs. There will be a base and an acid on this side, and on the other side there will be the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Any questions? <clears throat> so here's an example. In each reaction, identify the bronsted lowry acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So let's look at this first equation. What are we looking for here? <clears throat> We're looking for hydrogens moving from this reactant to this product. We're seeing, well, did it gain a hydrogen or did it lose one? So C5H5N, and then over here we have C5H5NH+. And H2O goes to OH-. So the water gave a hydrogen ion to this other compound. You see that? So which was the one who was donating the hydrogen? The H2O, right? So that's the acid, and then this is the base. The base is the babysitter taking the baby. So then over here, this is called the conjugate acid, and this is called the conjugate base. Water is the acid, hydroxide ion is the related base, the conjugate base. C5H5N was the base, it accepted. When it accepts that proton, now it's in a position where it could donate it to something else. It could donate it back to whoever it got it from or it could pass it off to someone else. It's capable of donating a proton, so that makes it an acid. It's related to the base, so it's a conjugate acid of that base. Does that make sense? This is something that will show up on the final. HNO3 plus H2O gives NO3 minus and H3O plus. Which one is the acid in the reactants? The HNO3. Because we see when it comes over here that it has lost a hydrogen ion. So when it loses the hydrogen ion, it becomes the conjugate base, because now it could accept a proton. So if HNO3 is the acid, then water must be acting as the base, and the hydronium ion is the conjugate acid. We're just calling the one that's a reactant the acid or the base, and we're calling the one that's a product the conjugate of that. If we had this reaction flipped around, then H3O plus would be considered the acid and H2O would be considered the conjugate base. So the word conjugate just goes with the, the one that's a product. Any questions? <clears throat>